Like James Braddock, Buster Douglas, and Leon Spinks before him, Hasim Rahman is remembered as a man who became great overnight, to which one can answer, yes, it was one night, but what? Today we will talk about the legendary night when Hasim Rahman kicked Lennox Lewis's ass and reveal all the details of the famous fight, one of the biggest upsets in the history of boxing. In 1997, Lennox Lewis became world champion for the second time in his career, regaining this status for the first time after losing in 1994 to Oliver McCall. It's over. What a in the championship fight, he just knocked out his offender. Since then, the Briton began to collect belts in all possible versions. By 2001, he was already at the height of his fame. Behind him are victories over Shannon Briggs, Evander Holyfield, and David Tua. Only one belt was missing before the title of absolute champion. In general, Lewis bathed in the rays of glory and could choose his opponents. Initially, Lennox expected to get a fight with Mike Tyson, but he was serving a disqualification due to marijuana use before the fight with Andre Golota, so he was unavailable. Negotiations for a unification fight with WBA world champion John Ruiz were difficult. So, in the boxer's team, as part of a voluntary defense, they decided to meet with little-known Hasim Rahman at that time. By that time, the American was on a modest series of three victories. He also already had defeats from David Tua and Oleg Maskev. Therefore, there was a feeling that Rahman would not be able to withstand the blows of the iron fists of Lennox Lewis. But the American team did not give up the chance and took it seriously. The parties decided to hold the fight in South Africa. All this was served under the sauce of analogy with the famous fight between Muhammad Ali and George Foreman, which also took place on the African continent and went down in history under the name Rumble in the Jungle. Although many were sure that the same level of competition would not be here and Lewis would deal with the applicant. The Briton himself was so sure of this that he neglected the preparation. Considering that the fight was to take place at an altitude of 1.5 kilometers above sea level in the town of Brackpan, Lewis should have arrived in South Africa early and undergo an acclimatization period. Instead, Lennox was immersed in the shooting of the famous film Ocean's Eleven, where he had a cameo role and hardly devoted as much time to preparation as he always did. As for Rahman, Hasim arrived in South Africa a month before the fight and had one of the best training camps of his career, realizing that he had the chance of a lifetime. Despite such a difference in preparation, the bookmakers were ruthless towards Hasim, defining him as a clear outsider of the meeting. Finally, this day has come. That's what this is about. Heavyweight championship and asked him to On April 22nd, boxers clashed at the Carnival City Casino ring. The first round of the fight was mostly marked by a shootout with jabs. By the number of blows, Rahman was not inferior to his opponent, but by accuracy he was very much inferior. One of the criticisms of Rahman is his opponent a chance to counter. When Michael Grant did that kind of thing against Lennox Lewis and Madison, his Rahman threw so many to what you're good at. Marsha. In the second round, Lennox became more active, launching both uppercuts and a straight right. Rahman looked too static, and it seemed that his chances of success really were minimal. The third round was also for Lewis. 
Linux worked with combinations and, at times, skillful actions with the core saved Haseem from big problems. In any case, it seemed that Rahman would not be able to hold back the attacks of the British for a long time. At the end of the fourth round, it became noticeable that Lewis was slowing down and working worse on his feet. Rahman, on the contrary, kept maneuverability and added. In the fifth segment, the applicant became bolder and more and more often went forward. Lewis Fick smiled at Haseem's attacks. But at the end of the round, Lennox again began to fail functional training. First, he missed a series of jabs, as a result of which he ended up near the ropes. After that, smiling again, he tried to get away from the shelling of Hazem, but ran into a cruel right side kick, after which he was knocked out. Thus, Haseem Rahman became the WBC, IBF, IBO world champion. Literally one successful attack at the end of the fifth round made him a world-class star. Lewis suffered the second defeat in his career. Against the backdrop of such a sensational defeat, the whole idea of trying to keep up with the legacy of Muhammad Ali and win in Africa looked so inglorious and disastrous that the famous columnist Larry Merchant subtly trolled Lennox, dubbing the fight as crumble in the jungle that was in tune with the legendary confrontation between Ali and Foreman in Zaire. After the dizzying success, contracts, fame, and popularity fell on Haseem Rahman. Haseem became a client of Don King. The veteran of the promotion shop had his own plans for the boxer, intending to arrange a couple of passing defenses for him. At first, they wanted to organize a fight between Haseem and a strong middle peasant Brian Nielsen, but the fight fell through. Then Haseem agreed to defend the title in a fight with David Izon, but then Lewis intervened. Lewis's lawyers went to court demanding an immediate revenge, which Rahman refused. The law sided with Lennox and Rahman had to immediately defend the title of champion in a duel with his victim. This time, Lewis treated his opponent with due respect and showed how great their difference in class is. The Briton won by knockout in the fourth round. After he defeated Mike Tyson and Vitaly Klitschko and then hung up his gloves on a nail. As for Rahman, he was dusting in the ring for a long time but that moment of glory was the most most in his life. Yes, Haseem later still owned the world champion belt and also fought for the title with Vladimir Klitschko and Alexander Pavikin, but he did not succeed in overshadowing his own success of the 2001 sample. 